In this video, you're gonna see how I took Katie from being on what I call the hairstyles hamster wheel back onto a clear road to success. What do I mean by hairstyles hamster wheel, I'm sure you're asking. Well, it's kind of that situation where majority of us fall into, right? We get busy being booked, creating social media content, and we're bringing in clients, we're bringing in money, but we're kind of just going really fast but getting nowhere and we're getting tired. That is what I call the hairstyles hamster wheel. I find the majority of hairstyles I work with fall into this trap. Uh, I was in this trap as well. Like we think things are going well, money's coming in, but you know, if we take a macro view, an outside view of it, we're just kind of really working, but we have the same money struggles or non-work life balance. And that's what Katie was focusing on. She wanted to know exactly what she was bringing in, the extra profit, and how she could actually spend less time working behind the chair and make more money. So exactly what I did for her. And you're about to watch. First, introduce yourself, and I'm gonna put your Instagram on the video too. Okay, my name's Katie. Uh, I've been a hairdresser for 15 years, and I'm in Clovis, California. Okay, cool. Not much. I just want to give you know, you were a good example of someone I brought on that was more or less, in my opinion, overwhelmed, not sure what to do, knew you were underpriced, and wanted to do something about it. Correct? Yes, all okay. the things. <laughs> um, okay, so prior to working together, did you have any idea of what you were making a week or a month or really any grasp other than like what you literally took in at the end of the day? So like obviously you had four clients and each one were three hundred dollars. You knew you made twelve hundred dollars. Yeah. So I was like I've always been like a numbers girl, so I, I had some idea tracking everything. I just don't think I took every factor in con into consideration or even looking at hourly like yeah. i knew at the end of the day what i needed to make but i didn't realize how hard i was working to make that money okay so i, I tracked my numbers but i just wasn't like realistic or understanding you didn't you, you knew the numbers that were happening but you still couldn't make sense of it it's kind I of just, yeah like i need to hustle to make the money but i didn't know how to get there efficiently or like at my age or my experience. It reminds me of um, when hairstylists go up in their pricing and they know they need to go up in their pricing, but they actually have no justification or real reasoning or direction yeah. of going up in the pricing. Mm -hmm. They just know they have to go up in the pricing. Yeah. Okay. And it's overwhelming. It's like, well, I want to know the why. Did it help you when you, you know, use the formula, the breakdown, did it help you better understand um, how much you were making per client, per service? So you, you know, were more selective of who you're booking? Yeah. So like any new client being brought on, I knew right away based off of the like numbers, the formulas you gave me. Yep. So I knew like what my ideal client moving forward would be to bring on and then the existing clients that I have, but just being able to break down what services I'm doing and then talking about price increasing, knowing that because this client is getting this service and this one's getting this service and looking at the time, looking at the big picture, like I was able to justify what I needed to do for them as a client for my business, but with their pricing. Yeah. Um, and then I guess we'll go back into that. Uh, the price increase, once you realized, I guess, when you broke it down hourly and figured out you're making an hour and obviously when we had our talk, do you remember, what were you like an hour, like $65 an hour? something like that it was 65 to 75 or what was it it was less than that i want to say it was like 45 to 55 so i was looking at my numbers before i got on with you because i track some of my stuff and for an example last week i worked 32 hours and i brought in 2800 like that was a very like slow Great. week but like whatever oh. like i had extra money but that's what i like brought home in february i worked a 45 hour week and i brought in 2600 well, just say that one more time for the video. Do that again. That was great. <laughs> that's big. So like in February, back before I even reached out to you, because I think I reached out to you in March. Yeah. I worked a 45 hour work week and I brought home $2,600. Yeah. Last week I worked 32 hours and I brought in 2,800. Wow, that's great. So like work, I brought in an extra $200 working 13 hours less. <laughs> yeah. So you're maximizing the money you're making behind the chair while spending more time away from the chair. 
Yeah. You know, you like your weekends, you know. <laughs> and I don't know like my exact number for like what I was making prior, but I know it was lower. And it also was based off of the services. Like there was clients I was barely making the minimum wage with. Yeah. And then there was clients that were higher than Maybe yeah. That, and I knew quickly just you being in California and me working with other artists in it. And when you're giving me like when I broke down with your hourly and we saw what that looked like, just knowing comparison of what like most stylists were charging. That's what I say. You need immediately to be at least based on your talent, like your talent, the content, everything. Well, obviously talent first, but like $75, like, right. It's not like the first thing I said, you, you got to be yeah. $75 right away. I remember like, what? Like, yeah. that's a big jump. Okay. <laughs> yeah. I think your bigger, the bigger, what was like when you realize how little you were actually making, mm -hmm. you know yeah. what I mean? And you're like, yeah, that needs to change. Um, which, you know, segues into, uh, you, you did have a lot of hesitation about just like, you know, sending out that message that we talked about and informing yeah. your clients, um, about the price increase and, you know, so on. Uh, you want to go into that a little bit? Yeah. So I remember you wanted me, your, your homework for me was like breaking down the numbers, finalizing it, making sure I was confident in everything and then sending out that message. I wanted to, and you agreed, giving them a couple weeks heads up. Yeah. And so I remember sending out the message. I wasn't nervous to send it out because I knew I had to do it. Like after looking at my numbers, I was like, okay, she had to get off the pot, Katie. Like, excuse yeah. me, sorry. Oh, no. <laughs> but like I had to, Leave that out. I had to do something and treat this like a business. And so I sent the message out and I think out of the 200 and something messages I sent back, I got two like negative responses, yep. but every single person that's come into the salon, like has been so understanding. Some clients will ask me like, Hey, I know you sent out that message or some prices. Just let me know what it is. Like I understand or in a consult, like I would go over the new pricing for the client and they would be totally fine with it. There was no hesitation, but I feel like a lot of it that you helped me with was like, First of all, knowing my numbers, knowing the why, but then treating it like a business and not a hobby, like you said, yeah. and having confidence in my worth. Like I was so afraid to do that to the client. I'm doing something yeah. to them, right? But it's like, yeah. that's not what it is. Like I'm, I'm doing my job is what I'm doing. And if you yeah. want me to do it effectively and to the best of my abilities, this is what I have to charge now. And it's been nothing but positive feedback. And if there is anything negative, they haven't come to me with it. And I don't know. And don't care. <laughs> Water under the bridge. Yeah. And honestly, I think that's the biggest thing when I work with someone or any hairstylist, they're obviously there's the ones I work with and the ones I don't majority of the talk is I want to go with my pricing and everybody always does. But again, without purpose or reasoning, they're scared to do it because they're acting on, on something that they have real, no justification or reasoning about. But mm -hmm. when you realize the numbers you are doing, Versus like what the going rate is even just to just know that it, it helps you just be like, okay, this is why I'm going up and now I can act. And like you said, over 200 messages going out, you had two hesitations. That's fine. But again, like we figured out on the call, there were low tier people anyways. Low tier mm -hmm. people usually tend to be the basic haircuts or the group great coverage clients, like the low tier clients that you weren't making big profit from. So yeah. You know, like you just showed, you can work less and make more or work less and still make the same amount. But you can say, OK, like if my prices don't fit you and, and or your budget, that's fine. I can make a recommendation. You know, you just allow it to be like, you know, a non-issue and then you continue with the people that you want to do. You know what I mean? Yeah. And are you now knowing like your profit margin for your bigger services? Are you booking According, like, uh, I guess we get into projections, but are you booking according to like profit margin? Are you trying to like, based on the people who are coming in, new clients, right? Like, say five root colors message you and six break on um, like full light highlights hit you up. Obviously, you're trying to hit the bigger profit. Yeah. Okay. So yeah, I'm trying to be a lot more selective, like. Again, what you're helping me realize too is that like the, who I have in my chair and in the salon is my choice and who I enjoy seeing and who's helping my business and then just fulfilling me. And so like I'm being choosier with any new clients that are coming in or existing clients that want to get in. Like I know who's going to make me the most money and who I'm also going to feel the most rewarded with. And yeah. so I've been really picky about that and taking out the emotions. It's like 
I'm going to get everybody in. I'm going to do my best, but I know that this is a priority over this. Yeah. So uh, I was going to say, uh, when you're booking, so like, yes, obviously you want to be excited on the services you're doing because you're excited to go to work, you'll do good work and you'll probably shoot content, which content will turn into more clients being booked. Um, does it help also like, uh, for example, you know, your numbers will go into your average profit per week. Um, but does it help you now know, like, well, I guess we'll go into that now, you know, on average, what you're making profit, like after you've paid all your numbers, you have an average now, right? Or yeah. an average you're happy with. What is the, the average you're keeping every week? The last so, month, I would say like six weeks, I've been tracking it. And yeah. it's funny because, again, I'm working less. I have kids, so I've just been home more and more present. And it's made me happier. Yeah. But I'm working on average 32 hours. And my like slowest 32-hour week was 2500 But I'm averaging like $2,750, $2,800 working three to four days a week. And that's like, I mean... There was weeks that were at 3,000 and then there's weeks that were like, you know, the lower 2,500, but my average is right there in the middle between 2,500 and three grand working 32 hours. The profit, the money you get. Oh, to profit. Oh gosh. Well, that's You're a little dang, Katie. <laughs> <laughs> um, I have that. I have all that for you. So I think, I think you were around like 1,200 or 1,400. I'm pretty sure. Yeah. So I have it right here. Okay. Yep. Building, you. Yep. Yeah, so like every week has been different, but like there was two consistent weeks where I had eight fifty extra, and then uh, last week I had thirteen hundred extra. Okay, so so but, we'll say a thousand, thousand. Yeah, would be fair. Oh, yeah. Depending, yeah. and again, this is an average right now where you're choosing to work a lot less. Yes. Right. Yeah. Okay. So, but that's good, and again. As anybody's watching the video, that is her profit. She's paid all her product, all her, you know, operating expenses, salon, suite, whatever it may be, and then living expenses. So everything's paid for. And then average based off 32 yeah. hours a week. Yeah. You're keeping about a thousand dollars. So that's a week. So every full month, you're you have an extra four thousand dollars that you can do whatever you want. Yeah. It, it, now, have you done? I mean, that's great, right? Like now, like oh, you, I, you didn't know you're even, spending money, right? Like you're yeah. like, all right, I have it in the bank. Or I don't have it in the bank. But yeah. now you can kind of like, and I think this is the best thing you can kind of plan for. And I guess that gets into what I was going to ask next is projections. Have you, or do you like the fact that you now know, okay, I'm going to hold myself accountable to making, you know, at 32 hours a week, I want to be bringing in an extra thousand dollars. I mean, the, or a thousand dollars profit every week, and you uh, look at the next week coming up. And can you go into that a little bit? Yeah. So it's it's actually funny because when you taught me or reminded me, I should say, I mean, you taught me, but like the planning of it all, like looking at my numbers, and then every day I've been coming home and like putting those numbers in while it's fresh in my head as well. It reminded me of when I first started. Like I'd be like, okay, I had this on the books. How much am I going to make this week? Not knowing my numbers, but like planning it, and it was yeah. so basic. And that's literally what I'm doing on Sunday or Monday before the, the week planning. And if I have a break in my schedule or I have somewhere I can put someone in and someone's wanting to get in, it's like, okay, well, what am I making this week? Would I rather be at the salon or at home? Or am I going on vacation soon? Do I have something I want to go buy? Like whatever it is, I'm able to see if I'm covering my overhead, how much extra I'm making, if I'm breaking even, if I am, am I okay with that? So yeah. I feel like I have more control over like not feeling like I have to slave away to make money. And at the end of the week, like, let's just look at what we have and hope we're good. Yeah. Or at the end of the year, when I do my taxes, like how much did I actually make? Like I know every week what I'm doing and how much extra I'm going to have or not have, which is okay too, if I want to be home more. <laughs> so way less stress and way more, I would say, work-life balance and happy in both ends. 100%. And that's, again, why I call it the hamster wheel. You know, when stylists all were is really to be booked and busy but the more you're booked and busy most hairstylists have the mindset of just take all the money that comes to me aka the clients and that's yeah. really not the way to do it i mean i'm sure at first if you if you don't know your numbers and you're just spending money and you're not like you know niching down and targeting the goal clients you want to do that produce the most profit or make you the happiest um you will always be in that hamster reel and you'll always be overwhelmed and you'll have no real plan and yeah. that's what I see a lot in like, you know, the endless 
you know, Facebook groups, people, oh, what are you guys charging? Oh, this is a slow season. Da, 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 da. And like you found from social media, and I guess we get into that, like you can like almost turn off and turn on your social media in a way to get, have clients come in or attract new clients. And then when the new clients come in, obviously you are way more pickier based on who you want to do. Uh, just based on the services, obviously you like to do like the um, you know, full head, um, the full long, bigger blonding services backed by like extension services, which is, you know, yeah. highest tier clients I think we have. Yeah, it was, it was kind of weird because uh, like learning to take the emotion out of it, like this industry, something I love is the personal relationships. And I'm not saying that I look at that client as like a dollar sign, but I have to remember like that client is that client and we have a relationship and that's a great part of their experience in my career. But that client is this number. And so like looking at that number, like not being desperate to bring them in because of who they are or what I own them or whatever else. Like yeah. it's a number and I know my numbers now so I can be pickier with them. It's like inventory. You know, when when you understand your inventory and then like, you know, the services you're going to provide are just backed by a profit you're going to make and again like if you're going to have clients come in and utilize social media to attract new clients and be booked uh, you know it's one thing to have get, get followers get views and all that but you know if you post one video and you're booking you know have tracked four new clients you know that's what i mean depending on your profit margin for the bigger services you know We'll say anywhere two hundred dollars. That's for like a full and highlight profit margin. Um, that's what four times two, uh, eight hundred dollars. Ideally, obviously, not to say we're going to book them right away, but they I will. Know, no, go super with the gloves. Sorry, Daniel. <laughs> it's okay. No, I can edit it out. It will be edited out. No problem. It's ruined all that. <laughs> no, it's fine. Um, yeah. So obviously, again, using social media, which was a big important thing to you but I, you know obviously you can do that whenever you want like you got you you know we worked on your social media content you know you're a little more lenient on yourself about that than anything but i again your biggest concern was understanding the money so you didn't have to spend endless days or time behind the chair so you can enjoy your summer or your time again creating a better work life balance and just my opinion, reason I want to get on the call with you right away, well, first to do this is because, you know, I, I did feel like you were kind of like lost and then you got it right away. And then once you got it right away and it made sense, you put it into action. Once you put it, you, you were probably one of the, not to say the first, amongst the many, I guess I ended the call while or ended our, uh, our program together at the same time I wanted to create these videos. And I was like, oh, Katie's perfect. Because a, a lot of people, hairstylists, you know, we go years. You know what I mean? I don't know how long how long you've been licensed. Fifteen. Okay, fifteen years. You, majority of your career, you were always scared to act or, or like almost to, to know your numbers. They're om it's almost like taboo. Like I don't want to know the numbers, so I don't have to be accountable for the thing I know I need to do. Hundred percent. So, yeah. So it's like avoid it and just keep going on in the hamster wheel. But one again, that you probably you got to a point where like, no, I need to fix it. I need to find someone who can fix it, help me fix it. And then obviously we worked together. We figured it out your numbers pretty quick and you did you did the thing. Yeah. Which is great. So I applaud you for that because again, thank you. Many hairstylists and people some of I've worked with, they want the answer, but they don't want to do anything about it. They only yeah. want to know that it can or will or how to. And then I give them all access. I give them exactly the formula. We prove it works and then just don't do it. It's like, you know, I, I do the same thing. You know, like, well, I know I need to be on the treadmill, treadmill every day for an hour and da, da, da. And I may do a half an hour or just skip and do it at night or whatever. So, you know, we're humans, which and the hardest thing to do is change your habits. Because 100%. And that makes us uncomfortable. But I yeah. think the one thing you should never be super comfortable with is not understanding your money. In life, you know what I mean? It's yeah. not just be a hairstylist. It is ultimately like, you know, I get the vibe from you that your biggest purpose was making the money you wanted, but actually spending more time at home with the kids, mm -hmm. which is, you know, that's a mom. That's, you know, your biggest thing is job. But at the end of the day, it's missing out on those, you know, sport events, 
um, traveling and going to a baseball game and like, you know, hanging out. And that's, yeah. unfortunately, you know, we live in America and America is very uh, fast paced, but going in this, again, hamster, I guess I'm going to say fast paced, yeah. but going nowhere, doing yeah. a lot of things, but nothing like coming to fruition or happening. So I applaud you for that. And uh, Thank I think you. that wraps up, wraps up our call. I don't, I don't need any more. I don't, unless you have more you want to say, or maybe you can check my notes. I don't think, uh, I don't think I have anything else to bring up. I have something that will hit on that paper that stood out to me Did when again? it comes to like social media, because I enjoy doing social media. Like it's a yeah. good outlet for me and it's fun, but it was never like the main priority that like I wanted to grow in that, but that wasn't like, cause you know, in the consult form, you have like options you can choose. Like, where you yeah, yeah, yeah. Like that was one of them, but it wasn't like the main thing for me. I don't want to be like an influencer or blow up if I do awesome, but like my platform is an outlet that you taught me will help attract the clients. And I remember like I would share pictures, I would share reels, I would like just do things, but I didn't know the purpose of why I was doing it. And so you helped me realize like what, what I'm sharing, if it's going to attract or not attract clients, you helped me like realize that I can share myself more, like my personality. That's like half of the experience with the hairdresser, right? Like someone that's new coming to see me, I'm in a solo suite. So it's a one-on-one, it's intimidating. So they're kind of getting a little taste of me before the appointment. Obviously if they're referred to me, like they know I do decent work or great work or whatever, but you really taught me like showing myself the why I, the why behind what I share and then there was one more thing that I remember. Oh, just like the being overwhelmed with everything. It's the same as like what you share with numbers and like planning it, like sitting there and just oh, having yeah. ideas, having content planning, texting my client. Cause I was so afraid like, Hey, do you care if I record this video? Like texting them before, like this person will be great for this reel or this, whatever. Do you mind? And they'd show up with a coffee in hand and all excited. And <laughs> kind of, I've gotten used to it now. Like I asked, yeah, they want to do yeah, it. Duh. I see Instagram. Let's do it. Like, oh, that's great. Yeah. And I, I think that is one of my last things where I was talking about, like, just again, most are overwhelmed with social media. Cause again, we want to, we wanted something to do instantly. Well, right away. We don't want to look like we're trying to do something and nothing works. Right. So, yeah. you know, most don't act or they just post content with re without really any purpose. Mm -hmm. So once we figured out, you know, your three types of, you know, audiences you're going after, or like we call them pillars, it was, it's much easier and you can do it whenever you want. So like now, you know, the system and you know how to spend, you know, 20 minutes or 10 minutes a day night before to plan on the next client the next day. So you go into work with purpose of shooting content and then you don't have to be overwhelmed of like, okay, what videos did I shoot today? And how can I make this a video? You know what video you're shooting. So you just yeah. put it together, post it that night or post it the next morning. So yeah. again, even just that, like, again, video wasn't about more or less the social media thing, but now that we're into it, obviously a lot of people are overwhelmed with social media because of it's another number, you know, and you like you learned like people want to choose i guess i'll get into it. like people want to choose the hairstylist after they realize they can do the results they want right because if everybody's doing the same level work at the same belt the same pricing the only other thing they're choosing to is to choose a hairstylist that they align with that they relate with that they think is funny that they think they're going to have a good good time for four hours a session or five hours a session people yeah. are spending a lot of time with us so they want to know before booking, because again, as long as the results are there, which they are, the price is at a great po price point for your results, that now I'm choosing based on who you are and what you represent, the, the baseball team you love, we might be going to the same game and I realize you're going yeah. to it, you know, whatever it may be, or like whatever, whatever it may be that they choose, the it is you. Mm -hmm. And I think that's what people are scared to put on there because again, the first thing we have to worry about is, oh, will people like my results? which is the first thing we have to get over. And we have to get over that because that makes us money. You yeah. know, once we're making money, okay, now do I have to really, you know, do I care about my social media? Do I want to put myself out there? But that is the really the next level and that's personal branding. And that's the easiest thing. And like how I said, you know how to turn it on and turn it off, you know, your social media in a way that you book 
clients and you book the clients you want to book and you know based on the profit margin whatever that is so that is it's hard it's easy but it's hard because it's again habit if it's you, you don't have a habit of getting in front of the camera or talking to the camera or creating content it's just a new uncomfortable thing but once you do it in repetition and again the formula that i give everybody i work with makes it the easiest way it can be like you're literally just using blueprinted videos that already have a format that you can shoot itself and you know why you're shooting it and it just simple. so simple <laughs> yeah so now you know you're graduated out of the program there's never going to be the system makes it so easy that you can never not know how to make more videos yeah you know what i mean and that's why i do the what like a lot of coaching programs or programs it's just trend related not really on comprehension and, and know how to make it customized to you. So like everything they're teaching is like right now type things, which what happens when in six months when things completely change for 10 years that their program literally doesn't work anymore. Yeah. And you know, but I do this in a means of that you'll never need me again. And that's, you know, I'm here if you need me again, but hopefully it's because you're at a different level, but ultimately at the price point and, you know, obviously the payment plans, but like, I want you to graduate to never need me again because you can use your social media to make money and you understand your money, which is obviously the biggest thing to have a financial freedom and a healthy work-life balance. 100%. Okay. And like you said, turning things on and off when I need to. Like I'm going to be professional and I'm going to be consistent, but I do have a whole life. So like knowing that I can give it my all this week or give it 70% or whatever it is. Like I'm always going to give my job my all, but I don't have to be like all in. Yeah. You know, before it felt like I didn't know what I was doing. So I was overwhelmed and like doing it all, all the time and not like consistently or with personal boundaries, work boundaries, yes. client boundaries. Yeah. But ba you can stand firm on your boundaries once you know the money is there. Yes. Because it's like, 100%. I don't need you. Like I'm yeah. I hit my thousand dollars this week. I don't need to book you. Yeah. I don't care about your great coverage. Yeah. Know I mean? But again, if you have time, the kids are away and you know that and you want to go, go crazy and you earn another 800 also control that 100 percent. yeah okay all right katie i appreciate your time i appreciate the call um okay all right bye katie thank you bye thank you bye -bye.